The framework I'd like us to look at is, it's called many things, but basically it's, it's a framework that's been developed over many decades to try to understand why certain innovations are adopted and certain other innovations aren't adopted. Yeah? You could call it success and failure, but it's not that simple, as always, because some innovations limp along yeah, in daily use but don't make any money, yeah? and some are successful initially and the household names and then collapse after a year and still don't make any money. So the success failure thing is not quite that binary, yeah? but in terms of the diffusion study, trying to understand why certain innovations are successful in terms of use, adoption, application, but others sort of never get there or fizzle out. And we have a whole wealth of research on what works and what doesn't and why and under what conditions. That's the good news. The bad news is we're not going to go through that, or maybe that's good news as well. I don't know. But what I'm going to do is just distill, if you like, the headline framework from those studies to say, look, what are the sorts of things we need to look at and interrogate, and in this case, in the case study, yeah, Murray Design, to try to sensitise as to what are the important things that are likely to influence a successful outcome against a less successful one. OK? OK. Sorry about the um, blatant commercial break. Well, I'm not really, am I? OK. So um, if we look at this sort of 30, 40 years of research, we find a couple of things. One is that marketing doesn't help us very much. All the stuff in Kotler or whatever marketing text you use is excellent. A fantastic book and a, a very good author. However, um, in terms of innovation, it doesn't always give sound advice. Okay? For example, in almost every marketing textbook, you get the language which comes from this research, but without actually understanding the research. This language of laggards and leaders and innovators and such like. And so you may be familiar with this. It's massively misleading. Yeah, and the logic behind it is as follows. Something like, you know, the, um, the innovators, which is a confusing term. It means those who adopt really early. But they're not really innovators, are they? They didn't create it. Anyway, the innovators, you know, they do this. And then it's the early adopters, and then they do this. And then it's the main majority, and then it's the blah, 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 and then it's the laggards. And I look at this stuff, and I'm irritated on so many levels, as you quite imagine, yeah? Personal level, in most cases, I'm a laggard. And I've been researching and teaching innovation for about 25 years. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Um, hence the clog example. That's where I started. Yeah? So it's really quite irritating to think, well, it, is it even plausible? Yeah? And then you look at the empirical evidence, and it collapses immediately, which wouldn't matter if it was an academic debate. But I've been to marketing sessions where people say, we're targeting the early majority, or we're targeting the laggards, and therefore this and think, What does that mean? And the answer is nothing. Yeah? because they do these normal distributions. And basically what they do is, um, let's just say, uh, permanent marker, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? Yeah. OK, so you know, what they basically do is have a sort of distribution, and it's <laughs> not quite a normal distribution, but it's not far off, slightly skewed, OK, deliberately to demonstrate reality. Um, OK, so, <laughs> and, and if you do a sort of cumulative version of that, you get the logistics curve, yeah, very roughly. The, the same thing, this is cumulative, that's just across time, yeah? OK, so they're basically saying you can salami slice this, and in any marketing seminar, they'll have that, I think it's early adopters, yeah, blah, 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 uh, laggards, blah, 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 blah. And they actually begin, the really bad marketing texts, um, start to put percentages on this based on the nature of the, the normal curve, yeah? What's wrong with that, and why does it matter? Apart from the very bad drawing skills. But apart from that, what's wrong with it? And then, so what, in terms of management? Because that's what it's all about, the so what. Why should we care? Well, it's not going to get bad advice, but it's terrible advice. So what's wrong with that, do you think, fundamentally? Which is why we're going to discuss this whole idea about innovation. Tell you what, if you look empirically, yeah, these things don't exist. And a normal curve, you know, you can have all sorts of interesting shapes in terms of, for example, the amplitude there. You can influence it, is what I'm saying. Yeah? These aren't set categories, you know. In certain instances, I might be an early adopter. In other categories, I might be what they're calling a laggard. And the ludicrous idea that there are only so many percentage in each category is ridiculous. Does it limit your thinking? Massively so. So you tend to say, well, we're targeting the innovators and early adopters, so it's a high margin strategy, brand's important, <coughs> premium pricing, blah, blah, blah. And then you can step back and say, well, OK. And then they start putting percentage, well, that's going to be 200,000 units in year one. And they're usually surprised in both directions. You know, either they sell 10 units, yeah, 
or they, a million, and then they can't provide it, and then a the competitor mops it up. Yeah? So it's very, very misleading. So it tends to close down, yeah, in terms of innovation strategy. So it's, it's massively, massively misleading. So the basic relationship is true. I mean, that's not that's what you tend to get in these sort of phenomena. That doesn't help you a great deal. But, so the discussion is less about who are we segmenting in, in, in that sort of categories, but more about how can we influence the nature of that curve? Yeah? How quickly do people adopt? At what point do we reach a sort of saturation? So I think it's much more interesting, although they tend to reproduce the bell curve in the text, I actually think the cumulative curve, the logistics one that you've got below that, is much more interesting in terms of innovation strategy. Because when you do the cumulative curve, yeah, I should have done a different colour, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, maybe later. Um, lots of interesting things, yeah? I am going to do a different colour because I can't even see that and I'm standing on top of it. Uh, what about a red one? Yeah, red and green. You can put your glasses on now, okay? Okay, let's do the cumulative one. A bit better than that. Okay, so same sort of thing, exactly the same data, yeah, and you get a sort of logistics. It's quite stylized, but if you do data after the event, you know, ex post, as you say in studies, you look back and say, actually, it fits. Da -da, yeah? And there's a whole industry of people fitting these curves, so we've got a lot of data on that. So this is um, cumulative adoption, yeah? So it's a sort of proxy measure of success in a sense. That, you know, how many people are applying it, using it, depending on the nature of the product or service. Okay. okay, and that's usually time, but it might not be. Sometimes it's other things, um, but generally it's time. Okay, and you get, you get three, <laughs> I'm doing it again now, three, not four, you get three so, yeah, bits, if you like, which are much more interesting than our bell curve. Because why? We can influence it. And that's the whole point of managing innovation. It's not sitting back and saying, oh, that's how it works, is it? It's just accepting it. Oh, we're just doing the laggards, guys. And what you find is, for example, we can influence that, the rate of growth or accumulation in this case, yeah? Things we do can influence that in both. It can be, we can influence it to become more, wide, uh, more rapidly adopted. And things we do badly, assuming you want to promote adoption, can actually reduce the rate of adoption. So the rate of thing is largely in our gift by good and bad practice, yeah? <clears throat> in the third point, this is like an asymptote for those who want to pretend they do sciences and things. Yeah, the sort of, if you like, the point at which I've got five smartphones, I can't buy a sixth one, not, not even I can, you know? My drawers are filling up, okay? The sort of saturation point there, you can begin to think about, well, hold on. We can influence that as well. That's not a given thing like in physical sciences where you reach a point where you know, electrons start jumping out of channels and you think, oh, Christ, you know, well, the mass has gone out the window. Yeah, that's a real phenomenon, is it? It's a real phenomenon. Yeah, but here you can start to say, well, hold on. What other segment haven't we attracted? Yeah, these guys have all got five cell phones. But who hasn't got a cell phone? Why haven't they got a cell phone? Yeah, and what will make them buy a cell phone? What can we do? So you start to challenge, if you like, what the limits are. So the purpose of inverting that coming to a logistics is partly because it's closer to reality and partly because it does reflect things you can influence, which is the whole point of managing innovation, yeah? Uh, but reversing back, so you can influence, if you like, the absolute level of adoption. You can influence the rate of adoption. In fact, you will influence it, even if you don't manage it, because things you do will influence it, often so it's lower, yeah? So it's not a choice. Uh, what about, what's happening here then, in the first bit, where it's relatively flat? So in time, not much is happening. So what is phase one? What's happening there? So in phase two, you're getting adoption, cumulatively, and you can affect how quickly that happens, explicitly or otherwise. And then you can also begin to influence, well, what's the rate of sort of saturation, the asymptote? But what about in period one? What's going on there? Not much, I hear you cry, because it's very flat, isn't it? But what does that mean in real life, where we, most of us live? Hmm? Adaptation? Adaptation? Mm, probably a bit less. The, the, hmm? the duration could be shorter. Uh, you could try to, yeah, yeah. In terms of yeah, what you might want to do is to, um, I don't know where to put, put my arrows, is to compress that, yeah. So you might want to, in terms of yeah, what are you trying to achieve in that phase, you might want to compress it. But why do you want to compress it? What's happening in that phase? <laughs> That's a very pragmatic one. <laughs> You're losing money almost certainly. Yeah. <laughs> so this, for example, yeah, 